Pinball is really pretty simple. Now, I'm not going to cover, I'm actually not going to cover how to physically work on the game. I'm not going to cover, uh, I'm not going to cover how to replace the coils, how to mechanically work on the game. That's honestly pretty simple and anybody that's looked at the game uh, at the inside of a pinball machine really knows how to physically do those kind of things. Uh, what I want to concentrate on instead is how to work on the electrical part of it. Specifically, there are three things that I want to cover. Number one, the solenoid circuits. The solenoid drivers. That's really the coils. Number two, the switch circuit, which in a pinball is actually called the switch matrix, and I'll explain a little bit about that. And finally, oh, I guess more than that, I'm going to do four things, uh, the lamp driver circuit. And then finally, number four, the uh, high voltage power supply. Because the high voltage power supply in this pinball, this F14 that we have here, does have a problem in it, most likely a bad Zener diode, and, and, was, and, uh, and we'll talk about that as well. In order of how often they fail, uh, solenoid drivers are definitely number one, switch number two, it's really a toss-up between lamp drivers and, and, uh, and high voltage power supply. In fact, perhaps the high voltage power supply actually fails a even a little more often than, than the lamp drivers. But let's start out by taking a look at the solenoid driver circuit. In the pinball machine, there is a power supply for the coils. In the older Williams games, like this one, it's about 28 volts DC. In the new games, the what they call the WPC system, it's 50 volts. All the coils are 50 volts. In this game, all the, the uh, bumpers and, and kickers and so on are 28 volts. Only the flippers are 50 volts. There's a separate 50 volt power supply that's right here on the board. This is only for the flippers. There's a flipper fuse here. This little power supply is only for the flippers. Um, the, uh, all the other coils use uh, 28 volts DC. All the new games, all the coils are 50 volts DC. The higher the voltage, the more powerful they are able to make those flippers, basically. Well, that 28 volts DC is connected to every coil in the game. There's a wire that goes from coil to coil to coil in the game that carries that voltage, the solenoid power supply voltage, to each coil in the game. A little later on, we'll take a look at underneath the play field and, and I'll show you those things. To energize each coil, there's a bunch of transistors here on the board. And right down here, there's a group of transistors down here on the board. And up here, there's also another group of transistors. Let's take a closer look at those. These are all TO220 transistors, TO220 package. These are the TIP122s. These guys right here. That's pretty common one to use throughout them. Yes, you can use it for any pinball. Also, there's another group of six up here. These are what they call the special solenoids. This group of six is used for the bumpers and the kickers. Solenoids where you need a very fast action. As soon as the as soon as the ball hits those things, as soon as the ball hits those uh, 
uh, the bumper or the kicker, we want to have an instant reaction. And so those are what they call the special solenoids. The other ones detect a switch closure. The computer says, oh, well, I think you've made that switch. Okay, I'll activate the target bank reset or whatever it is. So these are like special fast acting ones. Uh, actually, the circuit is really virtually identical, and we'll take a look at that in just a second. But each of these, each of these coils is connected to one of those transistors. It's connected to the collector of the transistor. Now, these are Darlingtons. I'm not going to draw them as Darlingtons because it just takes too much time. But they are actually all Darlingtons, and the emitter is grounded on each one of these things. When the computer wants to when the computer wants to energize a coil, it turns on the transistor. We're going to look at the rest of the circuit in just a little bit. But the when the computer wants to energize the coil, all it does is turn on the transistor. It puts a small amount of voltage on the base that turns the transistor on. Now these are Darlington, so it really takes about 1.4 volts or so to turn it on. When the transistor turns on, of course, the collector is connected to the emitter. And the current flows from the 28 volt power supply through the coil, through the transistor from collector to emitter and to ground. Notice, of course, that it's going in the direction that the arrow is going, number one. Number two, this is a ground switch, isn't it? This is a ground switch. The power is always connected to each coil. To energize the coil, we simply switch the ground in and out. When the, ground when the ground circuit is completed, the coil energizes. When... Okay. That's bizarre. Yeah, I, I have a bad, uh, a bad... A bad, very bad thing on my... Uh... <laughs> I have a bad connection, a bad switch on there. Anyway, see now we got it. Now you guys got to go like this. See, you're gonna, and, and then it's gonna cut back to me, and we'll keep going on. When the computer wants to energize a coil, it just turns on the transistor. The transistor activates, completes the ground circuit, and the coil energizes. When the computer wants to turn the transistor off, it just removes that base voltage. The transistor turns off, and the coil de-energizes. No big deal. Well, let's say that you get to the game. And um, you have a coil that doesn't energize. It doesn't energize at all. There's a real simple way that you can test to see if the coil is good or bad using just a clip lead. <clears throat> if I take a clip lead and ground it to the ground it to uh, the ground braid somewhere, and and right here on the pinball there's a ground braid that surrounds the whole the whole pinball right here, it goes all over the place. And I just have a black clip lead, well it doesn't have to be black, but I just have a clip lead attached to this thing. All I have to do to, to check to see if the coil is good is take the clip lead and touch the collector, which is the metal tab of the transistor. It'll energize either the lights or the coils, depending on what's hooked up to that particular transistor. Now, I am not testing the transistor this way. I'm not testing the transistor. I'm only testing the coil, aren't I? And what I'm doing here is I'm taking the, the clip lead and, and shorting that guy to ground. If I short this collector directly to ground, I'm essentially bypassing the transistor, huh? And if I do that, the coil energizes. I know not only is the coil good, but I got power to the coil, and the wire back to the board over here is good, too. Now, you can do it under the play field as well, and I'll raise this in just a little bit and show you. Um, on the pinball machine, you have the two solder lugs. One of them will be connected to the power wire, to the positive, 
and the other one goes to the over here to the computer board. I could take that same clip lead and ground one side of the coil. It will also energize the coil there. So that's if 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 you try that and the coil does not energize, you probably have a bad connection somewhere. Maybe the coil is open. You can turn it off and check the resistance of the coil. Uh, coils generally have a pretty low resistance, uh, you know, anywhere from you know eight to ten, fifteen ohms, something like that. Regardless of what the resistance is, if it is open, then the coil is bad. If you find that the coil is open, that is, you, you have a broken wire on it somewhere, don't throw the coil away before you try to find that broken wire. Peel the paper off the coil. Just peel the paper off the coil. And you have a 50-50 chance of being able to fix it because one of the coils naturally is wound around the outside of the coil and it goes to one of the terminals like that. The other one goes to the inside. If the one on the inside is broken, you can't fix it. But if this wire is broken right here, you can just unwind it a couple of turns and, and rewire, re-solder it on there and it'll be fine. Coils are expensive, so you don't want to just throw away a coil because it's not working. Now, a coil that doesn't work is really not very common. Most of the time the coil is burned up. Right, Shirley? Most of the time the coil burns up. In fact, you've got one right there. Let me just uh, grab that. Let me grab this one too. Oh, thanks. Most of the time when a coil is bad, it's physically burned up. You can see that it's visually burned up, and that's usually what happens. And what causes the coils to burn up, other than the flipper coils, which we'll talk about in just a little bit, uh, what causes like the bumper coils and so on to burn up is that the transistor fails. The transistor shorts collector to emitter like we've seen a bunch of times and, and, and stays energized all the time and burns up the coil. So naturally, when you